taken a piece of this assignment and they ran with it. They didn't do it part time. They spent their life doing it. When Jezebel was threatening the prophet of God, Elijah the Tishbite arose, a fiery prophet who frustrated the council of darkness and left. And now, probably in the 60s or the 50s or the 40s, who knows, one woman was crying in slave trade and said, Oh Lord, I may die, but let this little child of mine exalt your name. And that person became your ancestor, became your grandfather, became your father, and now it is you. That woman's prayer who died in the slave trade, that Lord, I saw a vision that Africa must be saved. That's you sitting down, roaming around, and God is saying, do you not know you are a manifestation of prophecy? How we limit him? How we limit him? The gates of hell. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse eighteen. Let's hurry up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, but once again, the gates of hell. Satan personally took it as a responsibility. Satan told all the demons, stand. This Paul, I've noticed this guy is, I mean, this guy is just winning souls and expanding and enlarging the territories of the kingdom. I will hinder him by myself. Listen, when you see people being challenged and confronted, shut your mouth. It's because they have, many of you have not received any confrontation. You think it's just because you are in Christ. It's because you have not done anything striking enough. At least start praying. Pray to a point that it generates fire and see what happens. That's the night somebody will appear to you and say, let me warn you. Your father obeyed us. Your mother obeyed us. Take care and leave. You wake up in the morning and say, what happened? I'm praying and I'm seeing somebody appear. And you think it's backsliding. It's because fire did something in the spirit. The gates of hell. Let me tell you, there are giants in every mountain. Don't let any man fool you. I pity any man of God that wants ministry, wants crowd, wants miracle, and will not pray. You are roaming around doing CEO or doing president. You will die like a chicken, I tell you. See, let me tell you. The, if you know how desperate Satan is to destroy your life, Satan does not mind if you die after koinonia on your way going. That's when you will appreciate the mercy and the grace of God. Because for one month now, you have not prayed, some of you. And you have traveled and gone everywhere. And yet nothing happens. Just a cry. It's just because I'm in Christ. A lady prayed in the night. Brothers and sisters, prayed in the night, physically, in the morning, her uncle called her and said, what did you do? Her physical uncle alive, what did you do? I can't remember, he said, be careful, you don't know who you are trying. Let me tell you, faith will not open like that. You want to bring breakthrough, you want barrenness to stop in your family, you want oppression to stop, the cause of poverty to stop. All this, all this deep Christianity will only, the devil will encourage you to keep doing it. But let fire burn upon the altar and you watch reactions from the gate of hell. Oh yes, I tell you, reactions from the gate of hell is not a sign that the victory of Jesus is not there. It's a sign that something you are doing is striking a call. How many of you have finished praying? And you find out that your loved ones die insulting you and there is fight in the house. It's when you finish praying. 
the day you don't pray, there's joy and peace and love. Even somebody who doesn't like you just loves you. But you take out time and blast in tongues for two hours non-stop. As you step out, they say, look, I've been warning you. And you say, what did I do? It's not the person, the gates of hell. Attempting to stop you. You tell that man, no, I won't speak with you. I'm going somewhere and see what happens. That's the day somebody will come and tell you, we don't do it like this in Nigeria. Better bend or become a fool. And you sit and say, truly, Satan is threatened by every communication of steel towards your destiny. I know what scares Satan. I found out early in life. The moment you say, I am taking a step, I tell you, Satan fears you. It's not everybody Satan is afraid of. There are men who are determined. When you worship God and you say, Lord, in life and in death, Satan says, what do I do with this person? Whether you pray or not, things are working well. I guarantee you it's because somebody somewhere is praying for you. A day will come, God will wake and say, Mr. Man, there are still other sinners getting born again. Your tenure of, of cheap playing Christianity has been expired. And they, it doesn't really matter. Oh God, I thank you. I love you. You're my king. You died. You've done everything. You will, you will waste like a chicken. Especially, take what I'm saying serious. I'm not playing games. There is a gate of hell. It will meet you on the road to your job. It will meet you when you're about to give birth. One of our ladies just put to bed. Honey, worship him. Bouncing baby boy. Hallelujah. At the point they were talking stories here and there. And she said she had a dream. And she saw me. I thank God for using my faith as a communication of victory and seriousness in the spirit. No, I say it with, with us. If you see me in your dream, before please hear what I'm saying, before you carry newspaper around and say, you are, you are programming all of that. Let me tell you, some of you are not serious with your death. Even you, you know you are not serious. That's why the gate of hell will pass you. You say, look, what of me? They say, no, 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 you are not an issue. There is somebody we are looking for. Listen, may your life not be so cold that the gate of hell ignores you. You would think it's spiritual growth, but it's a sign of being so inert in the spirit. You are not striking any cause. When the devil wants to destroy your parents, he comes freely. No resistance whatsoever. You snow in demons, come and do what they do, and, they, and they, they come out, and you wake up. I refuse my life to be like that. For as long as I am alive, the devil will know that I love the Lord, and I will stake my life to see his kingdom come. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know there are some of you the covering of your prayer that is keeping your family? Make no mistakes about it. They are criticizing you and you don't know why. It's a reaction. Don't stop. That's the time to stay. After they do all of that, you find a corner. Kapo katala bataya. You know how things rain. Come on. You know how they rain. Don't stand outside behaving like a fool. You lock yourself. Sekete kata baba. Manta protokosaya. Fire is rising everywhere in the spirit. And the gates of hell are saying, here he comes again. May they know your name. He said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Joshua Selman I know. They will know you and know your tongues. Once they share it, they say, here he comes. Tongues that have grown with pain. Tongues that have grown with sacrifice. The gates of hell will fight anything they can fight in your life. Please be aware of it. You may be as beautiful as the sun. You will watch men pass you like this. That's when it will occur to you that the God of this world can blind people's eyes. Hallelujah. One day in my life, fridge fell on my head. The devil wanted to destroy my life. Yet, by the mercy of God, I've said with you some of don't think I'm playing games. That's why, if listen, 
when the devil was doing that, he saw the word I'm giving you. It, it's not just because of Joshua Thelman. When they looked at the womb of her that was with child, they said they saw two nations, not two people. There are some of you, the, the arsenals of hell rising against you doesn't even have anything to do with you as in you. is what you represent. But slide and see how the devil just leaves you. And upon this rock, I will build my church. If you travel up and down and come back safe, it's not luck. There is a law of life. If you don't know it, you will keep being afraid for the rest of your life. Tomorrow we are going to a bomb show. Praise the Lord. To go and invade and set fire. It's fire all the way, brothers and sisters. Hmm. So break every chain. Break every chain. May your appearance be the threat of hell in any territory. That when you stop, come on, man, the katalabakaya. Look, there are some of you The reason why God will insist that you marry somebody Is because he's taking himself to that family He packaged himself to you And he's saying go there And you enter that family And you just discern the spiritual atmosphere And see chains that have kept people And say for introduction, welcome note Lift up your head. All these days. That's introduction. But why has your life not caused this kind of threat to the gates of hell? Hallelujah. Moses threatened the devil when he died. Satan took his body, his dead body. They were fighting over his dead body. Satan said, He's dead. I still want it because if he resurrects, I, I rather carry it and keep it and make sure nothing happens. The dead body of a man. Elisha died and his dead body still brought somebody back to life. But the beautiful part is that Luke 10, 19. It said, Behold, see, I have given you. Whether you know how to accept it or not is not the issue. But I have given you. It said, Behold, when the Bible tells you, Behold, it means see, conceive what I'm saying as a reality in your spirit. It's not just open your eyes and see. You are already see. You are not blind. Behold, man, yabata, I give you. I, give, I confer upon you. Power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over how many? All the powers of the enemy. The word power there is the word exclusia, authority. I give it to you, Joshua Thelma, because you will need it. You will never be able to advance Koinonia without that power. There are gates that will rise. There are gates over Saria. Don't think this crowd gathering outside is just because Satan was asleep. There is a force. We know where we do it. When the prayer band comes together on Tuesday and they lift their voice, something is happening. And while you are there in your room, some chains just break. And you say, let me go for Koinonia today. And something wants to keep you. But God will say, come, come, come. Listen. Please let me submit to you in all sincerity. If your prayer life is dead, use this meeting to track it back to life. I'm not playing games. This is not an issue of I'm calling to the ministry of prayer. Nobody is calling to any ministry of prayer. I say everybody is calling to the ministry that will make Jesus come. The advancement of the kingdom. He didn't tell some, let me teach you how to pray. The rest, go fishing. He was talking to everybody. You see the importance of prayer. If you are not told this, let me tell you. What I'm doing to you is imparting the spirit of prayer and supplication. If I don't give you a reason to pray, you will never pray. All these lazy things people do around. And let me tell you something. A big secret. See, explore the mystery of night prayer. We'll, we'll soon do when there is a series on that. The 
mystery of night prayer. When all the noise and all the things that, that stop unnecessary angelic activities because of disobedience, those people are asleep. And you are praying. You are just worshiping, putting worship like this. That's why it's good to be rich. Create a prayer garden in your house. Put flowers. Put the portrait of Jesus. Remove every nonsense that Nigeria has put in your head and you put it. And you wake up in the night. You carry your notebook where you are trusting God for direction for the next level. You carry your Bible. You carry your recorder. This is what I do. This is what I do. I put heavy worship for hours. And while that is happening, I'm lying down flat with notebooks. Oh Lord, this land is opening up. God said, don't go anywhere. Stay in one place. Say, thank you Jesus for saving me. I would have made a fool out of myself. And God said, I want to do more, son. You are limiting me. You are limiting me. Expand your capacity. Thank God for what you have seen in Koinonia, but it's only little. And I say, Lord, supply the grace. And that heavy shakina comes. I lie down there, I sleep and I wake up, I sleep and I wake up. The body is tired, I say, sleep here. I'm not going anywhere. That's what you do on your bed. You lie down and then you hear phone and you sleep off. That is, is a basic level of spiritual growth. The spiritual growth that is a reflection of laziness. You don't write your exams on your bed and say, bring my exam paper. No matter what the rain is, you get up. Please, are you getting blessed? I'm trying to impart some level of seriousness in us. Because this is how the grace will reign. The gates of hell. Everybody say, I have authority. When I read this scripture years ago, it made me afraid. There are two words in this whole thing that make me fear God. Not behold, not power, not all. By any means. Or any means. What does by any means mean to you? Is the part of scripture you understand that to open up. When the Bible says nothing shall by any means, it's a double confirmation. So in case anything happens and I didn't pray, Satan will still not use it as a yardstick because the revelation of by any means is at work in my life. By any means. Whether by means of my ignorance or carelessness, that scripture still fortifies me while God is trying to restore me. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you only believe in the power, that's what you see. If you believe the by any means part, that's why some of you were almost sleeping with one lady one day. You two, you don't know what happened. Right? Never brought light or something. That's the power of God working. Don't, don't just laugh. Come on. You know I will talk to you. Right? Or you were planning to go somewhere and rain fell without crowd by any means. Keep in you. I want you to realize that you truly have authority. Now, whether you have received it, it's one thing for me to give you this. It's another thing for you to receive it and yet another thing to know how to use it. Are you getting me? Whether or not you refuse it, it does not mean I did not give you. He said, I give you authority. That's all you The second limitation that the Bible lets us see is the limitation that is caused by lack of a transformed and an aligned mind. I want to dwell on this a little and then we'll pray. The first limitation is the gates of hell, Satan. But the second and even bigger limitation is lack of a transformed mind. The absence of a transformed mind can be a limitation to the might and the glory of God finding expression. Now, let me explain something very quickly. I want to just correct something very, very quickly. Please look up. I taught something and we're having a school of ministry and I did a little teaching and I saw the way the student the thing was just nailing them and uh, they were saying, it's not like I don't agree with you, but let it just settle down. What we call the tripartite nature of man. I want to teach you something. Please look up. 
People have written books who have never had any encounter with God and have written all kinds of audacious books. Let me have three people. I want to correct something now. Please. Hallelujah. Watch this. Just stand face. You stand in the middle. You are wearing white. God bless you. Watch this. Look at this. This is what you have been taught. Now, I'm not against what we call the tripartite nature of man. But I want to teach you something that will really liberate you. Otherwise, you will not understand this transformation thing I'm talking about. What I'm going to teach is very powerful now. This is what we have taught people. This is man number one, spirit. This is man, same man number two, soul. Is that not true? This is man number three, body. This is what we have taught. The Bible never teaches this one. This is nonsense. That religion that brought up that. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It is true that man is a tripartite being. But the concept of tripartite being is not three distinct individuals like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. It's in the similitude of that. But watch this. This is the part I want to explain to you. What is the soul of man? Look up. If you don't understand this, forget transformation. Forget carrying the power of God and the glory of God. What exactly is the soul of man? It is true that the Bible says that you beget spirit, soul, and body. Right? But what is the soul of man? Is what I'm saying is, can you separate the spirit of man to say, this is spirit. You, this is soul. Stand there. This is body. Can that happen? Look at me. When a man dies, how many objects or entities are separate? Two. Is that not two? Whatever you call it, whether spirit or soul, we're about to find out. But whatever, let's call it X. X comes out and the body is lying down there. Correct? Is that true? We're about to get the name of X now. Listen. <laughs> you say why? No one say why. There's no why in the question. Are you, are you following what I'm saying now? If you don't understand this, you will be confused. Which part relates to God? Which part should change? Which part goes to heaven? And there is th that to tell you believers are not even growing. Because if you are growing, you must meet this question on the way. Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the soul? Look up. We teach that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Very correct. It's only that we don't think over what we are saying. Joshua Selman. Listen. Joshua Selman is a person. He has a handkerchief. He lives in a room. How many... Assuming this room is a living thing. How many living things do we have? Are you getting what I'm saying now? What you call the soul... Please get this. Never forget what I'm about to teach you now. What you call the soul... Listen... Is the spirit of man but connected to his will, emotions, and intellect. The will, emotion, and, and intellect of man are forces or spiritual frameworks that were attached to his spirit man to be able to help that spirit relate with the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the Bible says man is a spirit, it is true in that he's describing the fact that this spirit entity came from God, right? But the spirit like that, if the spirit just comes to the body, there will still not be interaction because of law of territory. Go and get my message, mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught on the law of territory that there must be compatibility in territory. That's why spirits cannot move freely in the earth. They need material bodies. Is that true? Because of the law of territory. So, the spirit as it were, is unable to find expression physical in the body until a dividing line. Are you getting what I'm saying now? An attachment that helps the spirit to communicate with this container called the body. And that attachment is the mind composed of your will Ability to make decisions. So the spirit wills. And through the will of man. The body executes that will. Are you getting what I'm saying? Emotions. And then intellect. A sense of comprehension. So this body can wake up as an intelligent person with a brain. Remove the will. Emotion and the intellect. And you don't have a soul again. 
You just have spirit and body. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you say man is a soul, you are right. When you say man is a spirit, you are right. But I'm telling you the dynamics of the difference. Because when you get born again, this guy, watch this. When you get born again, in, in its original sense, your spirit man is united with Christ. It experiences the fullness of salvation immediately. Immediately. Oneness. So where? Are you getting my point? The so where life implanted here. But that so where life has not found expression in this body. That so where life has not permeated these faculties that were given to you. That is why although you are born again, you find out that you may still have that appetite to smoke. The memory of what you did is still there. Because this dividing line, the will, emotion and intellect has not been transformed. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Bible puts it this way. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9. You need to understand this. Habalists understand this. Those who do astral travel, right? What they call them, Harry Krishna, or all this world religion, really, they understand this very well. It's part of the foundational teachings that they are taught. Everybody read. Want to read. The word end there is the culmination of your faith. Receiving the culmination of your faith. What is it? This is talking to believers. What is the salvation of your soul? The salvation of your soul is when your will, your emotions and your intellect progressively begin to experience the fullness of the reality of what has happened in your spirit. The degree to which that salvation happens is the degree to which your body begins to respond more perfectly to the impulses of the spirit which is connected with God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So watch this. All authority has been given. So we believe the word of God. That means this spirit man is carrying the very authority of Jesus. That means that if the mind of Christ is automatically attached to your spirit experientially, nothing will be impossible for you again. Because there is no resistance as far as your soul realm is concerned. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are we following what I'm saying? But this is usually the problem. Watch this. All power is here. The body is a puppet. It's ready to execute anything that these channels give it room to. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now this is all the power of God. But this is the level of access. So that power can barely find expression to the body. So all that the body executes, are you getting what I'm saying? Is just a little and a fraction of the capacity of what is resident here. But because human beings look at the body, and so promise now teaches because he uses his eyes to read. Oh, sick bodies you can be healed. Blind you will be healed. And your spirit man is saying, yes, we have the power, don't fear. But because you do not have that vision of your soul, the transformation, what makes the earthly heavenly? Are you getting my message now? That's very factor. I now come to him on wheelchair. Is it true that all authority has been given? Yes. And I say, stand up. And he can't stand up. He sits back down. I say, look, ginger your face. Let's try it again. What's this? Stand up. And nothing happens. And at the end of it, this guy says, your Jesus is a liar. What happened? He was misrepresented. You just misrepresented Jesus Christ. Because what you read and what happened conflicted themselves. Do you agree with me? Now I am telling you that God is in his throne at the mercy of your transformation. As mighty as he is on the throne, he is at the mercy. Give me space. And then, while you are struggling, a man like Benjamin comes. And he just stands. And says, Holy. If you are on a wheelchair, stand up, stand up. And he stands up and he's walking. What happened? More Jesus than you? No. No. There is a greater conformity to the image of the Christ that has made him, his body, now responds in greater measure 
are you getting what I'm saying? So it is this middle man that is your next project the moment you get born again. Your job is to bring that mind that contains your will, emotion and intellect that makes your spirit called the soul. Right? So when we say salvation of the soul, you are not really doing anything per se, although we generally say spirit man. Are you getting my point? But what we really mean, I'm breaking the dynamics for you, is that attachment to your spirit man called your will, emotion and intellect. That is the doorway to which the reality and the glory of God find expression. Because he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. Your spirit man has been joined to Christ. Except you don't believe the Bible. But that Christ cannot go up on the sea because your mind is a limitation. So I come as a preacher and I say in the name of Jesus, darkness flee. And although the spirit is willing, but the flesh becomes weak because the doorway through which the possibilities of God through the spirit will find expression in the body is also weak. So I look at somebody oppressed and I say in the name of Jesus Christ, be free and nothing happens. When nothing happens over a long time, the devil now comes and says, why don't you try me? You have tried the rest. Jesus being part of the rest. And he said, Julio, let's go to the village. You have tried. Man of God, I appreciate you. I know God is using you mightily. But the emergency requires another force to come into attention. And the abilities that you meet have mastered the art of yielding his faculties. See, this is the same thing that happens when demons come. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Let me teach you something now. Watch this. A man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the Holy Spirit seeks to attach himself. That's called demon possession. Are you getting me? The will is helplessly at the mercy of that so the man can carry out anything. This man can be born again. Demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se, but they use the doorways of these faculties. So between the spirit and the body, there is an interruption. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So he can be born again, yet anger is still killing him. He can be a man of God, yet he's still masturbating and he's praying in tongues. Genuine tongues, real tongues. And you are saying, Christ, this man of God is fake. No, he's not fake. Something is happening in the soul realm. The salvation of his soul has not been perfected. So the Bible says it this way. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh but mighty through God are you seeing now he shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds casting every imagination every high thing that dwells in that soul realm and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ listen so the difference between me and many of us it's not necessarily more anointing as we call it. The difference is more alignment, more yieldedness, more translation. So it makes you reflect the heavenly. This is what happened to Enoch. Enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime, this, his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality. You see the concept of immortality that many preachers, people like Kobus, great man I love and honor, he's gone to be with the Lord. He caught the revelation of immortality, but not the dynamics of his manifestation. So he knew from the word of God that if immortality is at work in your life, the first thing that happens is you stop aging. At once, you stop aging. That's a sign that immortality is at work. But it so happens that immortality is not an impartation. The fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body. And our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation. So God just takes your spirit and your body life. The moment the trumpet shows up, the law of immortality is what will make your body. That's the law of resurrection. That's what makes a seed to arise again. Are we getting blessed? Let's see, guys. I just hope you understood what I said. Psalm 78 verse 41. Please let us rush. Help us Holy Spirit. 
Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah! They turned back and tempted God. And what else did they do? They what? They limited the Holy One who are the day, mortal men. God wanted to step in. Oh Israel, I want to do mighty things in your midst. But the Bible says they limited God. They limited God. A man can limit God. Brothers and sisters, how many times have we limited God in our lives? How many times have we limited God in our finances? How many times have we limited God in our ministry? Who told you the dead cannot rise? Who told you all these things cannot happen? There is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man. And so every time we engage, I'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation. Listen, I will never forget the first day that I was going to experience the anointing of the spirit in my life. I've never seen it before, never laid hands on anybody. I just kept praying and doing all the things that I needed to do. And one day, there was a lady who came from somewhere. And I prayed, you know, we bought food for her. And then she, I prayed for her. She got born again. And I was about to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just by faith. And I just laid my hands. And it was as if I was dreaming. I just saw somebody moving back. I had barely touched her. And that's how she just went on the floor. I said, oh God, what, what is this good news that I'm seeing? So be excited when you begin to see. Don't just be childish about it. For some of you, once you see that, you keep looking for people whose <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small. So that the anointing will enter fast. You now go and look for small, small ladies and try to throw them. I remember years ago, there was a gentleman. Okay, the power of God will touch you now. Now, and the lady is not doing like this, but refusing to fall. Then you put one finger, you not fall. Two fingers, you are doing madness. The agenda of God is bigger than that thing. God will just let you because at least you are cooperating with Him. So just do and let's continue. But it doesn't mean God, you are slowing down your progress. Some of you are doing it, Abby. Praise the Lord. And so from that time, I began to see, I will never forget when I saw one dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think it was our first crusade, Panchin crusade. We usually have pastor's conference where we have some time with the pastors, teach them. That was in 2006. And then we have like, um, we just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them. So I was in a church and I gave a word of knowledge. When I gave a word of knowledge, the person literally stood up by the anointing. You know this running that people run out and come. Brrr, I was shocked. I thought that's how they do it in the church. I called another person and he ran out. I could not understand. I didn't know that gradually, gradually, gradually. Hallelujah. Let me use medical terms. Have you seen times when medical people, a woman wants to give birth, right? And they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough. Is that true? Is there a baby? Yes. Does he want to come out? Yes. Why is he not coming out? The mother. Right? And sometimes they have to do all kinds of things. Worse come to worse when nothing is wrong, they just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out. Pray that God will not have to do tears for you for this destiny to come out by force. As soon as Zion travails, the Bible uses that simile too. She will put forth a child. So, the reason why God is able to do what He's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the Spirit over the years, we have been able to open a little more. So, the transformation that has, our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the Word of God, so more of heaven can find expression to our life. But compared to where God wants to take, we are still so slow. This is why we must continue contending. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is the reason why we celebrate men of God. We don't just celebrate the men. We celebrate their sacrifice of giving God space to 
find expression. That's why a man can enter a city and that city will speak. Not just speak in terms of crowd. A lot of even people who will not come for the crusade. There's a woman. I think one of the few women on earth that I know is alive that carries the presence of God in the order of Ketu. She's still alive in this place. When that woman is coming for a crusade, immediately they spot her car. That's how healings and deliverance happen. I was shocked. I didn't know there's such a person in the earth. Ah! The day I saw that, I said, my goodness. Ah, this is heaven. This is what we are saying. This woman stepped into the crusade ground. And my goodness, the kind of miracles. I'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not. You are just afraid of the pastor, so you say yes. Provable miracle. Wounds that will close right away, not magic. Right away, wounds, clothing. I said, my goodness, oh God. So you still have men and women. And ladies, do you know you have an advantage over men? Because of your configuration. Your configuration was designed in the similitude of the Holy Spirit. You see that? That's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized. Because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Let's write a few things. A transformed mind. I'm defining it now. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. I'm defining it now. It is the mind that has come into agreement. It is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come up and has willfully submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's a transformed mind. So a will, emotion and intellect that has come into agreement to no longer conflict the principles of God. An alignment and a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the Holy Spirit. Is what the Bible calls the end of your faith. The culmination of the work of salvation. And this very one. Transformation. Is not initial. It's not automatic. It's not at once. It's progressive. It takes a while. It is over that that the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. It says walk out your salvation. You see it now. That's the part it says walk out. Not just the work of the law. Not just try to add something to what Jesus has done. No. Work it out. The work out there. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, come out, work out your what? Your own salvation. As a matter of urgency. What is the work there? It's the name given to your participation. Your cooperation with the Holy Spirit. In your fasting. You are working it out. I will be sharing with us. In your prayer. And all the points I am about to give you here. You are working it out. Romans chapter 13 verse 14. The Bible gives it an interesting picture. It says put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Where it is like a cloth. Put on. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what? By so doing, make no provision for the flesh. That means there will be space for the flesh until you put on. That put on, the transformation is like wearing a new garment. Your possibilities in life through God is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of God. Hallelujah. You see why we love and honor the Holy Spirit? Write this very quickly. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man 
the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of God in and through his life that means your degree of alignment to God is the exact measure of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life not how much you carry but how much will find expression so you can carry God as we all believe but you never see that God show up in your life in my life Lord be glorified will you be glorified in my life Can you sing that song? Lord in my life, in my life, be glorified, be glorified, in my life. Hallelujah. So what is your own part of the deal as far as your, your transformation is concerned? Remember the purpose of your transformation is to give God space in the earth through your life. That God will find expression through you. That God will find expression through your church, man of God. There is so much God can do with that ministry. Woman of God, there is so much God can do in you. But your disalignment has made him look small. I have made... St. Patrick, a great man that lives, a man had died, brothers and sisters, six months she was dead, and St. Patrick came and said, where is the grave? True story. When they showed the grave, he signed his signature on it, St. Patrick. He said, dig it, they brought the man out alive. In this end, men whose mindset have authorized heaven to make them gods. I shared with you about ancient, I study a lot about revival. I was telling with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway. There was no money to buy another one. He held it and threw it and completed it. Transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly. Catherine Kuhlman she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating. She didn't realize she had left the stage. Apostle Babalola, for those of you who know, the founder of CAC, that man preached to a point he was levitating and going. They held him and brought him back. E.W. Kenyon Men who allow the possibilities of God. You don't die less than 70 in his church. He will raise you back to life. One time a man had a, a, an accident. A car climbed his leg. Broke his bones. And all E.W. Kenyon did was to look at him. Because he sees through his eyes. And he looked at him. Allowing heaven to pass through your eyes. And the bones started making noise. We say it today like mystics. But men, the Bible says, men whom the earth is not worthy of. How did they live? Imagine, brothers and sisters, Elijah, he was talking with God on the mountain, and they came to interrupt him. He called fire. Your atmosphere opened. Fire with chain consumed them, and they went back physically. Daniel entered the lion's den. And looked at the lions and smiled. 
Joshua told the storm to stand still. There is something we are missing in our generation. And Bill Johnson got it on the spot. He called it the supernatural power of a transformed man. How that heaven wants to find expression. Do you know how much God can do with koinonia? But in my little mind, imagine how much I limit him. And God says, well, I will just manage with the little space. And see the little things that trickle of his presence that happens during miracle service. And some of you are clapping and God is saying, I wish. I wish. That's the reason why God transports men from region to region. He's transporting himself to them. Tomorrow we are going to Obomosho. And God is going there through the degree we have given him. He expects to do great things, but he wants to do more. Unfortunately, Joshua Selman has refused to be as yielded as God wants. So probably there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die, but I may not be able to raise him. And I will go there, and when they finish, people will come with seeds and offering and say, You are a powerful man. And then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity. Because there is no passion to press the game. Don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation. You'll be a weak Christian. Compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth. They threw Paul, took him out of the city and killed him. When they killed him, they went. The other apostles came. Yeah, Paul, this is how you have done. Just took himself. The hey guys, please, I will talk to you later on. Paul said, I am in the straight between. I'm standing. The line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. That's where I am. I'm choosing to go or to stay. But I'll stay because it's profitable for you. Can you imagine a man like that? John, his mind was so alive. They threw him in boiling pot. And nothing happened. But today when they shoot you, you will die at once. Let me finish up so we we'll pray. So what then is your assignment? What's your challenge? Write these two scriptures. Philippians 2.12 and Philippians 2.5. That's your assignment. Let this mind be in you. Permit this mind. 2 verse 5. Let this mind. Koinonia. God wants to find expression in Zaria. God wants to find expression in your family. Give him space. Don't limit the mighty one. He is mighty but limited. Mighty, but limited. Mighty, but limited to you. What is your challenge? Write it. That means your assignment and your task to work out that salvation. To contend for transformation and alignment. So as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth. That's your singular challenge. That's your singular task. Contend for transformation. Give God space through your life. My goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression through me that there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously. I look forward to a time when there will be accidents and I will just come and God will say thank you. I've always wanted to raise them but I need an access point. Joshua Selman did there. Hey. See, the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. It didn't say you shall say be healed. So take me near that person and you will be healed. God wants to go to your home but he wants to travel to you. Transformation. The hallmark of transformation is oneness with God. Unity. The hallmark of transformation is where your mind literally becomes the mind of Christ. Your mind becomes a full expression. Becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of God. Are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of Christ? Are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of Christ? Give him space. Give him space. Very quickly before we pray, the process of transformation. 
what is the dynamic so how are you changed what 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 does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly number one the first key to transformation is a life of prayer the first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly pray in the spirit when you pray in the spirit that transformation is happening whether you know it or not that's why I encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak join the prayer department for one month so that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life pray in the night pray in the day separate days for prayer prayer in the spirit is one of God's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly it's one of the systems through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself prayer is like molting the way reptiles snakes molt you know what happens when they want to expand right they come out of their current cell it's a difficult process it's a sacrifice because snakes don't have hands and they have to crawl through and when they come out you now see the cocoon and the snake is thick before it now crystallizes that's how you go so while you are praying investments of prayer one hour two hours three hours sometimes you just dedicate the time morning till night worship and you just pray with fastings of course periodically not every time and something is happening to you all of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more you wouldn't know until you go for one meeting and while you are standing you are seeing people shouting everywhere and you are seeing the power of God moving and you are surprised what has happened to me space 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 you have given him space prayer is principally a channel for encounter illumination and empowerment not just petition petition is the last aspect of prayer the primary purpose of prayer is for encounter for illumination first corinthians let me give you a few scriptures quickly first corinthians chapter 14 i want to explain just write it chapter 2 verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god right he speaks mysteries and then verse 4 of 1st Corinthians 14 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies builds up enlarges his spiritual capacity number two Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27 the Bible says for we know not what to pray for as we ought to it says for the spirit he makes intercession for us he searches the mind of God right he brings an intermingling it's like a salt covenant he says let us reason together it happens in the place of prayer romans 8 26 and 27 and then jeremiah 33 verse 3 prayer grants you access to light and illumination call on to me and i will answer and show the great and mighty things not small and meager things great and mighty things let me tell you look at me there is no amount of bible study that will substitute for prayer do you know why many people are not really getting revelation because what you are doing is study alone and not prayer you can study but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a spell and release the life to you make no mistakes about it you can sit down study forever get up and carry the letter that kills go and teach and not bless people but true illumination is in the place of prayer and when you add prayer with fasting it's like a time bomb it's a sense that your life breaks forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily is this not the fast that i've commanded that means there is a type you can do on your own hunger strike right religious fast but there is a type I have commanded. And if you do that, your life will break forth like the morning. 
and your health will come speedily. James chapter 5 verse 16. The fervent, not joking and trivial prayer. The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous are much. And Prefer says, is dynamic in its working. So when you pray, when you pray in the spirit, you are enlarging your capacity. You see why we pray. You see why we believe in the ministry of prayer. It's not the works of the Lord to pray and fast. We are not trying to add to what Jesus has done. We are opening up to receive all that he has brought. Number two. The second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word. So here we have the ministry of prayer. And then insight and revelation from the word. Notice I didn't just say the word of God. It's for a reason. But if I say the word of God, many of us have been reading Bible. But the insight and the revelation, the illumination you get from the word of God. And then in addition to that, our obedience to the word of God is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us. Listen, listen. The word of God is like a bag that carries treasures. Your obedience to the principles of the world opens up the bag and releases the treasure inside. You know how granite is? It's in a shell. That's principally how the word of God is. When you act, your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you. So it's not enough to just get insight and revelation. You must be willing to obey to the latter. I wrote something here that is interesting. Revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion. Revelation. When you have revelation, insight in the Bible, and you do not have the willingness to obey it, you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion. A few scriptures. Hmm. Proverbs 24 verse 30. Let's look at it very quickly. We we'll look at three scriptures, Proverbs 24 verse 30, and then Acts chapter 8, 29 to 30. Proverbs 24 verse 30. Hallelujah. It says, 24 verse what? 30. I think I may have made a mistake. Okay, let's go to Acts 8 verse 29 to 30. While I look that up. Acts 8. It was the story. The story of the utopian Enoch. Watch this. That guy could not experience God in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding. And when the spirit said unto him, Go near and join yourself to the chariot, Tati. And Philip ran Peter to him and had him read prophet Isaiah and said, What? Understandest what thou readest? Not just that you are reading it. Do you understand? It's not enough to just know scriptures and claim scriptures. Do you understand? Understanding, illumination, insight. Job chapter 22, verse 22. Very powerfully. Job 22, 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. And lay up his word in your heart. Receive it. Don't just read it. Receive it. Let light enter you. The entrance of thy word give it light. There is an enlargement. He said, Write prosperously because of truth. The last scripture, John chapter 1, verse 12. This is the one that blew my mind. The Bible says, As many as received him, who is the him? The word. But as many, not everybody will receive the word. Many will read the word. Many will admire the word. But very few will receive it. He said, But as many as received that word, that word gives them power to become. Power to become. Power to become. When you receive the word, it gives you power to become what it says. Not when you read it. 
when you receive it and diligently obey the principles it transforms you to become so the word about tithing guarantees your financial future when you receive it you receive it by acting upon it and satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly Number three, the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship. A life of intense worship. Intense worship. Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wearing in excess. He said, but you be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Let me tell you something about worship. I've studied it very well. Worship brings the manifest presence of God to your life and your territory. Worship is a magnet. There are three levels of God's presence. There is His omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere at the same time. There is what I call His Emmanuel dimension. That when two people are gathered in a place, He is there in their midst. God with us. But there is His Shekinah. His manifested presence. That dimension is invoked in worship. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. Let's hurry up. Second Chronicles 5, 12 to 14. Second Chronicles 5. It says, And also the Levites, which were singers, all of them of Asaph, of Haman, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and pastries and psalms, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests, worshipping and sounding trumpets. Next verse. And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That what happened? The house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. Next verse. The Shakina of God came and rested there. So that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud. It said, For the glory of the Lord has filled the house. When you maintain a life of intense worship, the glory of God comes. Your body begins to shake. A literal vibration at His presence. And you are lying down there, smoking in that presence for hours. See, this is how to walk powerfully in the anointing and the glory of God. That the cloud the glory of the Lord. Let me tell you, when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life, you won't even be able to stand up. That's the kind of sicknesses will melt away. Infirmities will go away. The majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you. Maintain a life of worship. Put worship songs in your phones. Remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activity. Come and meet the worship team. Let them do a selection of spoken worship songs for you. Just lie down in your room. You may be sleeping normally, but let the songs just play. Sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing. No words to them. And you are just spoken. And after a while, the shekinah of God, like a hand resting upon eggs. Remember what I said about the hand. A hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek. How much more the glory of God when it rests upon you. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16 verse 25. The Bible tells us that Paul and Silas were locked up in the prison. And the Bible says they prayed and they sang. They sang praises to God. And the prisoners had them. He had them. Oh my God. That's why we worship a lot in Koinonia. It's the secret of the presence. It's the secret. Look at every man that works in the anointing. Every man that works in the miraculous. 
Benny Hinn will worship for hours. Dr. Paul and Ensha would worship for hours. Men who know God, men who carry the anointing, Catherine Kuhlman, all these great people, they would sing hymns and worship for hours. And when the presence rests, wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves. Your job is to get God to the sea and step out. Our worship team, all of them have been trained to understand. The assignment of Koinonia worship team is not to entertain Koinonia. The very assignment of Koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of God finds expression. That's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing one more time. You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. To listen to my message and voice of his presence is the foundation for this. We are going to pray. We are out of time. Rise up on your feet. Just two prayer points, but I want you to pray with all your heart. I like you to pray and ask the Lord and say, Lord, bring me to that place where the mind of Christ experientially becomes my mind. I'm willing to give you space. Go ahead and pray. I'm willing to give the God of miracles space. The God of breakthroughs. The God of signs and wonders. The God of impartation. The God of salvation and revival. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell yourself into two, please. You're going to pray. I'd like you to intercede intensely for your neighbor. Lord, let heaven invade his life. Pray. Let heaven invade his mindset. Let heaven invade his ministry. Let heaven invade his business. Let heaven invade his marriage. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Oh, in bed, I'm 
bless the fullness of the capacity, the fullness of the possibilities in God. Find it, bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. You're going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, in any way I have misrepresented you by refusing to give you space. I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation. That healing anointing must come out in my life after the order of Benihi, after the order of Ketrin Kuman. That prophetic mantle must find expression. I refuse to be a weak Christian. I refuse to be a weak man of God. That apostolic anointing will find expression after the order of Paul, after the order of Prince Wigglesworth, after the order of St. Patrick. My territory will experience revival, revival, fire, fire, fire. Revival fire, healing fire. No playing games, no playing games with destiny. No playing games. The sick must be healed through my life. The oppressed must be delivered. Sinners must be saved. Sinners must be saved. The church must be equipped through my life. I give you faith. My family must receive breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but just permit me to raise one more prayer point. Look at me. Look at me. There are two limitations to your being transformed. The first the gates of hell. The solution to that is have an understanding of your authority and exercise it. The second is the limitation that your mind gives you. The solution content for transformation in prayer and in the word. We are going to pray. There are forces that are vowed that you will never rise up to give God that level of space. There are all kinds of forces, but I'd like you to exercise dominion over yourself and your loved ones. You love them. Some of them don't know what you know. Lift your voice and cry in the next three minutes. <laughs> So please permit me to raise one more prayer point. I know we are out of time, but this is burning in my spirit. Look up. Hallelujah. God is doing things. Fire is burning in this place. Listen. Bishop Oyedeko said there was a time the church in Kaduna was not going. Nothing was happening. They had the heart. They had the mandate. But they were spiritual worlds. And they were fasting together with the pastors. Lord, what is it? And the Lord told him, come out. And he came out. And he said, look. And he looked upon the church and he saw a dark cloud. 
He said, this is the cloud that is misinterpreting your ministry. There are people who are genuine, but the perception of others about you and your ministry is either that you are fake or you are controversial. There are spirits that make it so. So people will not come to receive. So people will not come to be blessed. There are some of you, the helpers of your destiny have been manipulated. Whenever they want to come to your life, something drives them. Who am I speaking to? Lift your voice like a priest. Lift up your head. Lift up your head. Lift up your head. Forces of darkness. Forces of darkness. Lift up your head. Forces of delay. Lift up your head. Forces of cancer. Lift up your head. Forces of lukewarmness. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your head. That's how you rescue your ministry. That's how you rescue your marriage. That's how those things will be caught. They won't be caught by joking and playing games. Woe to them who are thieves in Zion. When you confront the gate, then they will open. When you confront the gate that are killing your ministry, then it will open. When you confront the gate, stopping your marriage, then it will open. You confront the gate, killing your family, then it will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to stop. We're out of time. Listen. I want you to take this revelation. God is not limited. We have limited Him. And the Spirit cries. The Spirit cries. If any man will give me space, he said, Go and borrow vessels. The problem is not the oil. But the container carrying it. If you enlarge the container, the oil will increase. Hallelujah. I pray for a restoration of every dead prayer life. Every spiritual lukewarmness that has authorized Satan to make it sticking out of your life. I empower you tonight with strength from above. In the name of Jesus. Every zeal and fire for God that has died for whatever reason, may it transfer to life today. Hallelujah.
Now quickly keep coming, everybody. Bless you for staying tuned with us till this time. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible said, God said, Let there be light. How amazing it was that in a split of a second, light came into the world. I want you to believe it today through the mouth of his servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, under the spirit of the Lord, that God is sending light to your life today. Everything that pertains to your life, God is bringing light to them. God is sending light to that situation. God is sending light to that academics. God is sending light to that failed marriage. God is sending light to your children. God is sending light to your business. And whatsoever darkness that have encumbered your business, encumbered your family, encumbered your progress, your ministry, your career, your academics, once light comes upon it, I am assuring you that every hold and fetters of darkness would definitely lose their grip over whatsoever that has kept you down, especially your health. God is sending light to it. Remember, it is not a desire of God that we would fall sick, but his desire is that every one of us will be in good health, even as our souls prosper. So get set that as the light of the Lord hits your life, embrace that light because definitely darkness has no place in your life and if you are a new viewer on this channel we'd like you to please subscribe to reflector hub tv youtube channel so that you could get our daily uploads stay revived 247 and your spirit man sets ablaze on fire most importantly you will not miss heaven at the end of your christian journey upon the earth god bless you share this video with your loved ones family and friends see you in our next video love you